the test from Fukushima. And, uh, you know, I said, well, I'm not really buying this argument. And then he told me that um, that uh, he, he was Mr. Amasa, and he also produces Amasa gas. And I thought, well, in my research for options for fixing radiation, I knew about Brown's gas. I also knew that, that Mr. Amasa's gas was considered the gold standard, way higher than any other type of Brown's gas. And so this is uh, an article from Rex Research, and it said that in 19, August 24th, 1991, uh, uh, they did some tests. He, uh, uh, that around that sort of time, Neil Brown did a test with U.S. Congressman and blah blah blah. And it says uh, directing the flame at cobalt-60 radiation was reduced by 70% in the sample. Directing the flame at am americium, the radiation was reduced to 96% in seconds. Now, when I saw the copper here exposed to the uh, so, sorry, exposed to the gas in the same way to this, it's held in a pair of pliers, and the gas was applied. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it basically did the same thing that's described in that text over there. there was, it heated up and then there was a sudden flash. And, uh, you know, because uh, if you look at Slobodan Stankovic's work, he's observed mostly OH radicals. OH radicals are all through the galaxy and they self maze. And so what I saw, th this is like a laser cut through here and the materials disappeared, but it did this flash, which is exactly what's described in this account of when Brown, Brown did his test. Okay. So I was excited at that point, and when I looked at the outside of this, I saw a perfect ring structure, same, same as, uh, as, as observed by Matsumoto, uh -huh. same kind of proportions, right. and it's perfect copper oxide with a carbon inner ring, and then this is uh, zinc. The zinc doesn't seem to be eaten, why? Because zinc is uh, a, a very difficult to f fuse beyond zinc. You have to work a lot harder to go beyond zinc. So uh, it had, the zinc survives, even though it's t uh, only 3 to 4% of the coin. But the copper has basically disappeared. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I looked at this section here. And this section is this section, which is copper. This is zinc on the surface. But this is like a, a curved bit. And it's got these cobblestones. And I noticed something on the cobblestones. And going in closer, this copper oxide layer has these things that have grown small. It's got small. And as they've traveled along, they've got bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the end, where they've died, they've left something that's mostly sulfur. Two oxygen, 16, goes to sulfur, 32. You've got quad alpha becoming oct alpha. You're just building it up. This is a standard reaction product that you get in ball lightning. At the end of a ball lightning exploding, you get a sulfurous aqueous smell. It's the same story, different, same story, different place. I could wow. say that more rudely, wow. but. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I, what I was observing here was what your brand was showing. Yeah. But I'm starting with not heavy radioactive elements. This is why I chose to take tungsten with thorium in it, very specifically. Yeah. And you can see here, this is the structure that I showed in uh, the um, data that I presented from the analysis of the inside uh, detritus from, from the 225 day reactor. You saw that uh, structure which I called the monkey. Yeah. And I've seen these in various systems. And as far as I can gather to where I am now, this is a very large macro evo. Uh, it's not as big as they can get. I reckon they can get as big as solar systems and even galaxies. But let's, let's stick it at something. We, but you can physically see these on some of the samples. I've even got one here that I can show you. And it was outside of the reactor. It migrated from the core to another part of the reactor and it got locked in place by a bend in a piece of the electromagnetic uh, heating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, it got locked in place. But here is the, the structure um, with the, the channel coming out. So it looks like that kind of monkey face, uh -huh. and that is actually right there on okay. this, this old, the whole thing. Okay. And the heaviest elements I observed in the tungsten, other than the thorium and the tungsten, is in this structure. So you've got, if you look here, there's aluminium, silicon, sulfur, potassium, calcium, iron, strontium, uh, strontium I think is a sideband, so ignore that, it's only in one case, and tin in multiple cases. So what is tin? It's when you start with a very heavy element, you fish and it goes to the middle of the table. Highly observed by various authors, okay. Um, but most of the time, it's it's basically going all 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 of the uh, fissioning is going down to the light rock forming elements up here. So thanks to this man here, this man he he took it upon himself to uh, uh, divest of some investments. I I I, uh, I decided to forego a Tesla, and, <laughs> which is why it's not so buy an SEM instead. 
<laughs> and it was a second hand SEM yeah, from South Africa. It wasn't such an old device, like three years old or something? Three years old, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't doing anything because they'd bust it in some way. So it, Alan took the, the, the sold as seen approach because it was a good deal if it worked. And it didn't work, so I think he went through two months well, of hell. It worked, it just needed some servicing, and I had, it's a learning curve. I never owned one before, and you know, how do you learn about it? You could go to a school maybe and take a course, but uh, it was time well spent, because now I know how to service it. So you when he it. used up a filament, a hundred hour filament in one week, and I was able less to, than a week. Yeah, I was able to clean it, put a new filament in. So he spent half a day of his own time getting it back running. So, and meanwhile, I slept for a few hours. <laughs> Literally, I was I was sleeping in the next room, and he was there getting it ready for the next marathon session. <laughs> but it's, everything is paid off. I, and and as I told told them about this, and, yeah. and I think uh, Sirt is it. You're, yes. you're going to have a go at this experiment. Definitely. And, I, and I've said yeah. using IAM tests, it, there's significant amounts of the elements that appear to be synthesized in there. You can test a bit of the indium beforehand at, at the same volume as the as the explosion crater, and you can test a bit afterwards with or without the cleaning product. I'd, I'd start with not getting the cleaning product. See if you get the same. Yeah, we need to. Uh, the first thing I do when I get home is to repeat that test with deionized water in the ultrasonic bath yeah. instead of the micro 90, which is the standard cleaning solution for vacuum apparatus. Yeah. And I, I said that the actual piece we put in there is probably preferentially small and long and thin. And I explained that Hutchison saw the most effects in long and thin samples. Yeah. And, and so this might be due to sound resonant modes. Right, in but there. the pits appeared right at the edge, with, uh, with, within a few millimeters of the edge. Yeah, and that's what you observe with these structures as well. So there, there yeah. may be some energy localization going on. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that that $40, $50 sample or whatever it was could do more than 100 experiments. You, you, you're looking at 50 cents an experiment in so terms of usable. Yeah. Materials. 43 kilohertz. How, how 42, 42, 42 kilohertz, 35 watts is 35 how watts. it's rated. Okay, and the size of the piece that you put in it was about 350 uh, micrometers I think thick? It was, yeah, I, I can send you the link. Uh, I'll, I'll publish all of this when I get a bit of time to write it up, which might yeah. be if I'm stuck here this, in bed, yeah. it might be this week. I mean, if this, <laughs> if this is really giving a result on a lot of places, this, this is like undeniable. Oh, the, the, this, this, this is stuff that's impossible not to recognize. Yeah. Because you would literally, if you had any form of qualification that was worth more than soiled toilet paper, and you looked at that and you ignored it, la la la, transmutation can't happen, it can't happen, don't tell me it can happen. Um, There's a clip for your video. <laughs> <laughs> My PhD Money and shot. all the documents and everything told me it couldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, you know, and, 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 and I'm putting that challenge out there, you, cool. you, you know. That's Alan cool. didn't get his micro, micro machining tools and create that and, and micro blend silicon dioxide and, and fluorine into the indium. <laughs> you know, he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Now, no, there yeah. is a potential, of course there's a potential, that for somehow this is a thermal effect of a carotation yeah. bubble, which is potentially possible, yes. and that for some reason there happened to be highly concentrated, localised uh, particles in there. Mm -hmm. um, that are then somehow liquidized in, into the f f depart de regardless of the fact that they're silicon dioxide and they happen to be liquidized to the same level of plasticity yeah. as, as the, the indium. I mean, like I say, when you look at it, either there's something really interesting going on uh, or there isn't, but you're, you're, you're going to have to do some serious mental gymnastics to explain the observables. Yeah. And, and that's where it goes to. I'm going to go see... Uh... Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll come there too. Yeah.